Hello, you are welcome. In today's video, we are going to look at Python programming and basically we are going to look at controls flow statements where we'll be looking at tasks that can be performed repeatedly and we'll write a few statements and then so many tasks can be performed without uh, repeating so many statements. Uh, so we are going to use our PyCharm. PyCharm is an integrated development environment. When you start it, it looks like that. And um, uh, here we have our project that we created already. If you have not yet created a project, you can go ahead and create a project. Uh, you click project new, then uh, new project. But so far we have our project which is ROG. And if you want to create a new file where you will be creating your application, you right click on the project name and then you select a new file. Uh, if you want to use already an existing one, like here we have introduction.py and then you have introduction2.py. We also have the main. This one is always there created by Python. So let's see, we are going to use this one. You click on it such that um, you can be able to open it. You double click. So when you double click, it opens and now you start writing your programs. Remember, Python is very easy language. Uh, it is highly typed. You don't have to declare variables together with their data type in order to have an output. Now, uh, in today's video, we are going to look at loops. We're going to look at the for loop and the while loop. And the purpose of this is to, if for example, you want to write a statement several times, you may not have to repeat it. For example, if you want to print from one up to five, you can say print, sorry. We use print is in small letters. If you use a print, then maybe print, uh, we want to print from one up to five. Let's say print one. Then enter, uh, maybe you say you want to print two. Uh, so you want to repeat this several times. You want to print from one up to five. This is uh, what you are going to do. Okay. You're going to perform it repeatedly. That is ordinarily. So if you have that, let's see what will be outputted on the screen. Uh, we want to run it, but if you want to run now, this is main. You're not going to run main. When you hit this one, run, it will run main. You want to change. Click there, and then you choose the current file. Yeah, such that you can run the current file. But this one is occupying our space, this project to pen. There is uh, here, we can hide it. So it is hidden, so I have a bigger working space. And now you click Run or Shift F10. So when you run, you can see you have one up to five. But of course, these are very many statements. You wouldn't like, supposing you want to uh, repeat or have a count from one up to 1,000, it would mean you're going to write print statements 1000 times. Of course, that is going to be tedious. So we don't have to do this. There are several ways to repeat things in Python, but the most common of all is the for loop, which is uh, much easier. Let us uh, hide this uh, terminal. Um, so how do you write the for loop? Uh, the for loop, we write the keyword for, then after that, the variable, uh, the variable name. Then after the variable name, then um, we write the word, the keyword in range. Okay, in a range. Then we open the bracket. In the bracket, that is where we put the number of times to be repeated. 
number of times to repeat a given task. After that, you put a colon outside. Then, uh, after you type here the statements that you want to be uh, executed repeatedly, but you have to put an indent. You have got to indent to put a space from here up to there, you know, you tab that is creating some indent uh, or any indent you can create so that all the statements that are going to be indented immediately after the for loop are going to be executed as a block. For example, now here we want to print, we want to print our value. What 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 are you going to print here? It is the variable name. It is the variable name. Yes, that is the one which is going to be printed uh, several times. Now this uh, variable name in here you can say we want to print it. Uh, five times. So the loop is going to uh, repeat that uh, statement five times. And uh, yes, if you run uh, the current one, you can see it is going to count from zero up to four. Yeah, when you put uh, that value, it starts printing, for, it starts counting from zero up to this number but not included the inc up to this number less than one. Okay. So if you wanted you to print from zero up to five, you would put a six, such that now it prints from zero all the way up to five, so that five can be included. So that is uh, what you will do if you want to repeat a statement several times. Okay. Now, um, any statement you put here under the indent will always be repeated several times. For example, you can say maybe print, print what? Uh, I want to print maybe uh, a stack. Yes, I want to print uh, those stars. Yes, because that is a string. Let's see what will be the output. That means every time, so those each time it prints a zero and then that statement, a zero and that statement. You remember in other programming languages, those of you who have got some idea about programming languages, if you wanted to print a block of statement, you would put a curly brace. You open a curly brace and then you would close a curly brace. That is, uh, for example, in C programming, in Java programming, JavaScript, C sharp, and other programming languages. For them, they go with it, those curly braces. But here, we don't use curly braces in, in Python. Instead, we indent the statement. Anything which is indented will be repeated. Eh? Uh, several times. If you don't want to be repeated, you just remove the indent and then you go back at the beginning of the statement. For example, you can say print, uh, print, the loop is done. The loop is done. Now, this one is not going to be repeated, it will be executed only once. You can see the loop is done, it has been executed once, but the others that are indented, they are executed several times. Now, if you try to indent this too, you see what happens. Even that statement is going to be executed repeatedly. It executes the first one, variable name, then it executes the star, and executes the statement, the loop is done, then it increments the variable name by one. It starts zero, add one, then it prints again. Like that, like that, like that. But if you don't want it, you remove the indent, and then 
that statement or even this statement when you remove the indent it will not be repeated several times it is only the one which is uh, now you can see yes so that is the purpose of the indent now um there are several ways we can have this done but this is just a variable name you don't have to put here variable name you can put anything you can say for example for i for i in a range six print variable name now our variable name here is i print what print i um yes then you let's see it will still give you the same output as expected okay. and um, so this is a, a program for repeating several statements there are several ways we can do this for example we can even put here some um we can put here a string for example uh you can say the first the first value the first value is mm -hmm. then we can concatenate the i oh sorry we have to use same um, quotes yes now it can understand uh -huh. the first value of the first value is it is i so you concatenate the i let's see what happens yes it has complained uh-huh print the first value that line two in a print the first value in this type error can only concatenate a string not integer to a string now this i is an integer it cannot be concatenated onto the string now there are two ways we can avoid that we can take away the concatenation or we can convert this string in this integer into a string by using that yes that will put i inside and you remove this yes now this string this integer has been converted into a string okay the integer has been converted into a string so with that yes you can see yes the first value is zero the first value is one which is not correct because this string will always be uh, repeated this value will always be repeated so this statement here uh-huh maybe you can say the value is the value is yes you know computer is garbage in garbage out when you give it something meaningless even the program will always run something meaningless so you have to write a program with correct semantics and the syntax yes so uh that is that another way if you don't want to use this concatenation instead you use a comma and then you do away with that yes just use the comma i and then you put your variable name still those two values will, those values will be concatenated now um there is another way maybe somebody can ask you write a program that can print a right angled triangle of stars on uh, the terminal the terminal is this one if you want to print uh, a right angled triangle of stars how do we do it that one we just put a star in the quotes in the yes and now we want it to be repeated how many times times i times so it will when i is zero 
it will print that star when i is one and so on and so forth let's see what happens yes huh? when it is zero it gives you no then when it i is one one times one star, it prints one star, two stars, three stars. So in the end, it, it is giving you a pattern of stars. It is giving you a pattern of stars that are making a right angle, the triangle. Or you can just, even if you put two stars, still they will be repeated this number of times like that. Or maybe you don't want to include this I, but you just want the program Python to repeat this statement six times. You don't want the value of I to be outputted. So you just do that. And now you are having a, a triangle of stars like that. Okay. That is so far. So good. But again, maybe we want the user to enter a number. That's right, the program asks the user for a number and prints it square. Then it asks for another number and prints it square, etc. It can do this the number of times that you speculate. Okay. You want now, this time, a user to enter a value. You remember to enter value via the keyboard, we use the term uh, input. So you say input, input what? Put text, please. Please enter a value. Mm -hmm. I enter value. So that statement, it will enable a user to enter a value. And let's say what, what happens when we execute that statement. Say, please enter a value. But now we have, it is going to ask you six times. So you enter value like a five. Please enter value two. Please enter value four. Please enter value. 34, please enter value, that one, please enter value, it is done, because all what you have done is to ask this program to enter value several times, but do nothing, do not display anything, okay. do not display anything, simply enter value. But we can say maybe, let us repeat this like uh, three times, and then please enter value. Huh? After enter value, we want that value to be printed. Print. Now, what are you going to print? With this value, let us store it in a, a variable. Let us say it is number, num. Mm -hmm. Num equal to? Input this, please enter value. Now, after, um, remember, I want the square of that value. So you can say the square of a number entered is what is the number, comma, then which number it is num times num because that is the square of the number that has been entered it is num times num but whenever you see these marks just down here like this red wavy and then this orange wavy it means that this is something with your program let's run and see your code has a challenge Yes, as I suspected. What is it saying? In line 3, where is line 3? This one. Print the square of the number, this. Uh-huh. Indetention error. Yes. Unexpected indetention. Yes, there is some indetention. Even here you can see that red wave there. Okay. 
but we want it to be repeated so we can indent up to that level mm -hmm. let's run and see mm -hmm. please enter a value so indentation value uh, it has gone let's enter value like a 10 again another error still i expected it in line is line three in print the square of number this one so there is a challenge with this one mm -hmm. type error can't multiply a, a sequence by a nine int of type string remember we said that an input value any value you enter via this input function it is taken as a string so what do we do we convert it into a number we convert it into a number such that it, we can use it for multiplication that's why there is this orange wave here even here it says expected type supported suppose eh, supports index got a string instead so this is a string so what do we do to convert this num into a number we can declare it as an integer or a floating number or we can just say here eval open a bracket and then close that bracket again now the number which is entered here is going to be taken as a numeric value and now you can even see the red wave, the orange wave has disappeared so let's see yes please enter a number you click there the number is seven the square of a number entered is 49 please enter a number five the square of a number entered is 25 i enter zero the square of a number entered is zero but still this one what do you mean by square of a number entered we, we can just pick the number as so maybe the square of this is this so we let's let's do it let's now pick the actual number num mm -hmm. num what comma uh -huh. that that number squared that number squared is hmm? now it picks the number that you have taken and it say squared is that number times that number let's run and see hmm? please enter value one one squared is one please enter number two two squared is four please enter number ten 10 squared is 100. So you can repeat that one several times. Okay. Again, um, we can also just be doing the, uh, we can do just the counting of numbers. You can do the counting of numbers. Let's say, um, Now with this maybe we can say in the range uh -huh, we want to print from three uh, eh, from zero up to three but that one remember there must be an indent so we say print uh -huh, print what we want to print from zero comma to three how will that one be done? Yes. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is <laughs> okay. This is just instructed what what is to be printed. We want to print. Sorry, we want to print uh, I. Our value, uh huh. But we want to print it from one up to three. That is now a range. That is a range. 
that you want to print starting from one up to three but of course the series is not going to be included maybe let me increase from one up to five so five will not be included you can see here but again we can choose to print them on the same line you remember that because they are now we put after print say here print i comma we are going to add the end then we put equal sign and now put a uh, put a comma mm -hmm. now that one will make these values to be printed on the same line horizontally yes so it is printing one two three four but of course we need a space between one and two and three and four so put a space there yes it will put a space or maybe we don't need a space we need a comma to separate those numbers so to put one comma two comma like that or maybe we need to put um that one so to still separate it with that whatever you put there will be the separator whatever you put between those quotes after end but the values are going to be printed on the horizontal line okay um that is the printing but again it is also possible to print from yeah from any range it is possible to print from any range for example i can say print from 10 up to maybe 20 separate them with a comma mm -hmm. So to add 10, 11, 12, 13, up to 19. But what if we want to count, um, we don't want it to be incremented by equal, um, okay, maybe we want to print like from uh, 10 to 20, but uh, um yeah from a certain value maybe okay from 10 up to 20 but we keep on increasing it by two 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 or three 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 so you say tw 10 comma the highest value where you want to print 20 comma then you want to increase it maybe by two hmm? yes so to 10 12 14 16 18 of course it does not include this last one if you want this last one to be included you put at least a number slightly bigger than that yes so it is going to print from 10 up to 20. it is possible or maybe um i want it to print from 10 up to 50 but increase in steps of five five yes so to go but not including 50 but we said from 10 up to 50 so we make it slightly bigger and then the value will be included again it is possible to print from a higher value counting downwards okay to decrement want to decrement from maybe want to print from 10 up to a value like a 2 or maybe from 10 up to 1 we count backward so instead here we put a negative 1 we want to print from 10 up to 1 but reduce by negative 1 yes so 10 9 8 up to because here we said the one eh? one will not be included that's why it is stopping at two if you want one to be included inside there we put a zero then one will be included but it's not always that it has to decrement by one it can also decrement by any other value 
So it keeps on decrementing by the value that you add there. So basically that is the reverse counting, okay? reverse counting from 10 down to 1, down to 0. Yes, down to 1 because 0 is not going to be included and they are separated by a comma. So that is a for loop, but again it is possible to use a while loop. Sometimes we need to repeat some things, but we don't know ahead of time exactly how many times it has to be repeated. For instance, a game of playing cards, it keeps on going until someone wins or there are no more moves to be made. So the number of turns will vary from game to, to game. This is a situation that you will call for a while loop. When you don't know the number of t uh, times the task is going to be executed. For example, let's look at uh, a temperature converter. Can say while loop will allow the uh, a, a while loop, it will allow the user to repeatedly enter temperature until a certain value that you specify is entered. Okay. Let's say it, if you enter a value which is negative 1000, which is below absolute zero, uh, this will terminate the loop. Now, how do we uh, write a for loop? Unlike a while loop, a for loop will start by initializing its count. So let's say temperature, maybe temperature, we initialize it to zero initialize our temperature to zero then say while while our temperature which is our term is not equal to negative 1000 yes put a full colon there while it is not equal to uh negative 1000 uh-huh which statement should be executed? All the statements to be executed must appear, must be indented. So say term, term is equal to, this term is going to be entered via the keyboard and should be taken as a numeric value. So that's why we use eval. Mm -hmm. Eval what? Now input. This is a function which will allow us to input some string because that one is always inputting a string uh -huh. input enter the temperature enter the temperature mm -hmm. uh, if you want you can help the user to know okay, that enter the temperature then negative 1000 to exit that when you enter negative 1000 you are exiting so there you are helping the user huh? you can put a colon here yes space so that one is uh, enabling the user to enter the temperature but of course when temperature is entered it will not be outputted on the screen unless you put that print you print what you want to print the temperature here which has been entered and convert it in Fahrenheit so say in um, in Fahrenheit, okay. in Fahrenheit, that is, uh, we now want to convert it. The temperature that you have entered, we want to convert it, but how? We have to pick the value which you have entered via the keyboard and then multiply it by 9 over 5, 9 over 5 times 10 which is the value that we have added, then plus 32. That is the formula for converting the temperature from degrees Celsius 
to Fahrenheit. Yes, uh, yes, degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. So yes, let's see this. Run the current program. Enter the temperature or negative one thousand to exit. So the temperature is maybe let's see the boiling point of water. In Fahrenheit, it is two one two. Enter the temperature. Maybe the freezing point of water. In Fahrenheit, it is thirty two. Maybe um, 37. Is this the normal body temperature? In Fahrenheit, it is 98.6. That, that, that. Okay. Now, when you enter negative 1000, it exits. Okay. It has said in Fahrenheit, it is this and it exits. Okay. So that is uh, a while loop. That is uh, a while loop. So a while loop, this loop continues until you put a condition to terminate the program. So when you compare this uh, while loop with uh, uh, the for loop, you can see that the for loop is uh, a bit simpler. It does not have uh, so many of these conditions. You simply write one condition, one statement, and then the condition, and then the statement should be uh, outputted. But this one, it will involve some initialization, which is not the case for um, the for loop. For example, uh, for the for loop, if we were to compare the for loop, if you wanted to output values from 1 up to maybe from 0 up to 10, you simply write 4, then the variable name in a range. You have to write the word in a range because the keyword understood. Then open a bracket, put the range. Maybe I want to count up to 10. Then you put a full colon, then indent, then the statements to be executed. I want I want to output my t, my variable name, comma, then end equal to uh, quotes, put space. Yes. Uh -huh. So it is giving you 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9. But if you wanted the, uh, a while loop, it, the while loop would be different. The while loop, you have to initialize. You have to say that maybe t is equal to t is starting with 0. Then say while, yes, while uh, t is less or equal to 10 full colon then indent print mm, you have to print print what print t you do want it on the same line comma then you say end equal to then space let me separate that with the a star no a comma yes and print then separate the space now if you leave it like this this loop will continue going without end it is going to be an infinite loop because always t will be less than t will be equal to zero which is less than 10. so in order to make it not stop you have to increment it and say that t is equal to t plus 1. It keep on incrementing until when it is no longer equal to or less than 10. Then it gets out of the loop. Uh, now you see, it has counted 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 10. 
then it has repeated the thing several times because there is a while and then there is a there are two loops here there are two loops here okay that's why the thing is done repeatedly yes it is done repeatedly let me first remove this one what do you mean? Hey, even another thing, by the way, this one was under a for loop. So there was a, an indent. That indent has to go. So that's why it had to repeat. Uh, even that indent has to go there. So that now it is going to understand it as another loop. Yes. So it is 0, 1, 2, up to 10. So you can see using a for loop is much easier than a while loop. Most especially if you want to terminate to start from a certain value up to a certain value. It is better to use a for loop. But if what you are using, you don't know where you're going to stop. You don't know the number of times the loop is going to be repeated. You use a while loop. So that is that as far as loops are concerned. Um, so those two loops so next we'll discuss the if statement but uh, yeah if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe so that you are the first one always to get a notification whenever a new video has been added yes like the video share and comment thank you very much we'll meet again for another uh, python programming uh, tricks. Thank you. Bye-bye.